So I was a child of the 80s, and if you weren't banging your head off the wall, then you were classed as normal, right? That was just the way it was back then. They didn't have any ideas of what high function autism was, and mental health was only really starting to make a real push forward. And when I was young, there was only a small window of what was perceived as normal. So anything outside of that normal, you kind of got bullied and bullied badly. Like, for example, I was a very gentle boy, right? I still am quite a gentle boy. And whilst there's nothing wrong with that, Back in those days, I was bullied to hell. I used to get beat up, I used to get kicked around, and I had to learn to defend myself, yeah? I had to learn to defend myself, and that was the way it was back then. So you just basically had to put up, shut up, and get on with your life, and put your head down, and just, just get on with it. And it was quite hard, you know, because I've always considered myself as normal, right? I've always, I've never thought myself as any different. I've just considered myself as normal. And when I acted weird, which I am a bit weird sometimes, when I acted weird, people would tell me about it. They would say, it's a bit weird, Raymond. And I would pull back, pull back into the perceived line normal and I guess that was society's ways of towing the line back then which it's completely changed now. So that led me to a lot of masking. So I've been going to see my hairdresser for almost 15 years now and I told her for the first time um, a couple of days ago that I was high functioning autistic and she said well you don't look autistic Raymond and you know, this is a normal response that I get and I don't hold it against anyone for saying that because, you know, they're not going to know. I don't agree with people um, when they get upset about things like that. I just, you know, they I don't expect people to know because they're right. I, I don't look autistic. I mask quite a lot and that is how I've learned to function and get by in society. And that's why in the 20s now, if you're autistic or, or high functioning autistic, it's, it's kind of great because you get to be yourself. You get to define yourself as you. And because of that, we're recognising a lot more. Whereas back when I was young, you know, if you straight out that small perceived normal, whoa. Oh, you know, you had you were smacked right back into that, that's for sure. And that because of that, I swear there's a lot of us that are undiagnosed, a lot of high functioning autists that are undiagnosed. A great one to show that would be the IT crowd. If you've ever seen the IT crowd, that's that's great. Both Moss and Roy completely autistic, but in different ways. It's really weird to see. I really thoroughly enjoyed that and it I've by watching that, I've sort of learned a bit more about myself, even a lot of comedy. So how did I find out? Because it seems like these days everybody's going, oh yeah, I'm high functioning autistic, or oh yeah, I'm autistic, when they've never been given a diagnosis. And I've never been given a diagnosis either. But I've worked in the mental health sphere most of my life. Most of my professional life, I've worked in the mental health sphere. I'm not a professional, right? But I've been around the block a bit. I've gotten to know a few things, let's say. And it's been mentioned to me by quite a few professionals that I could, perchance, be high-functioning autistic. And I absolutely rejected that at first. I was like, well, no, no. You would have to be completely different, and I just feel normal. I just feel me. This doesn't make sense. No, I'm not autistic. No, definitely not. <laughs> And I was quite young back then and I didn't actually quite understand it, but I'm growing to understand it more as the years go by. And I guess when it came to realising that I had it, it wasn't this big grand event because I had already been diagnosed with several serious conditions 20 years previously, or well, 10 years previously then, and I'd already been going through that. So to me, it was just another day. I think for the defining moment for me was when I had a son and we found out that he was autistic and then I started looking into my family history and it turns out 
then my dad was probably autistic as well. So it seems like it's a bloodline that runs through the men in our family. And it's been really interesting and eye-opening. And actually through watching my son and I'm finding that he has a lot of this, the same problems as I did at school. He's going through them. I'm realizing through that that I don't know, you know, I there's a good high chance that I'm high functioning autistic, and it made me really take a good hard look into myself. And actually, through observing my son, has answered a lot of plot holes that didn't make sense in my previous life. Like, why are people doing this? Why did they react that way? Why am I feeling like this? Why am I reacting that way? Just it answers so many questions, and it just makes sense particularly my social anxiety because there's no reason why I should have social anxiety because I'm, I'm an 80s kid. I was very outgoing. I used to go out with all my friends. I was always on the golf course. I was always going out to the pub and I was always on the dance floor, you know. So there's no reason that I should have social anxiety, but I do and I always have done. Like, I can go out to crowds now and be the complete socialite, but when I get home, I need to close myself away for about 10 hours or something like that, you know? But it's like, I really suffer from social anxiety and it never goes away. It just, when you learn to deal with it, being social becomes a task rather than just being normal, being social becomes a task. So you have to go home and just recuperate. It's actually made me realise a lot of things about myself. And it explains why my life was a mess through my teenage years and my early 20s, right? And it turns out that my life was mostly a mess because I didn't have any guidance, right? I've talked to a few professionals in the past who say, high functioning autism, if you've got intelligence there, it's re the kids do really well if they have guidance. Yeah, but I never had that guidance and I had to figure out everything on my own to which I found alcohol and, you know, that was it. Anyway, 10 years wasted out my life. But I say wasted, but I made all my friends and they're still my friends today and I wouldn't replace them for the world. So let's just say it was an experience. And that's no one's fault that I didn't have any guidance. I don't blame anyone. I used to blame people, but I don't blame anyone because everyone's human. Everyone's trying to figure it out. If I had a kid when I was 20, there's no knowing what would have happened. It was just lucky that I didn't decide to settle down and get married and have kids until I was of a mature age where I'd stopped drinking and I was thinking about life way more sensibly. But I think the main point with me and why my life got so out of control is mainly I struggled with regulating my emotions. I didn't actually have anyone around to help me do that. Um, my mum obviously doesn't know what it's like to be a man. My dad wasn't around, so I didn't have anyone to really sit who had actually been through this before and sat there and talked talk to me about it. And I do this with my son now because I've done it all before. You know, I've learned how to live a quite a comfortable and happy life through this and actually how to make it work for me. So hopefully I'm going to pass this on to my son. But my main problem was regulating my emotions. And that's why I found alcohol because alcohol did that all for me. The anxiety, the ups and downs, the crazy feelings, it just all went I went under alcohol. It was like I was a new person and I had the confidence <laughs> that I never had before and it was downhill from there. So mainly, mainly, there was a few major life events that happened in my life as well and it was because I didn't know or I didn't understand and I didn't have any help on how to deal with those emotions that I was having at the time and I just went completely off the rails. One thing that someone said to me uh, a couple of, I think it was last year, they said, you were quite wild when you were younger, Raymond. I still see that glint in your eye. And I'm thinking, yeah, I probably was actually. <laughs> I probably was a bit wild, but um, yeah, I'm all nice and relaxed now. So I guess um, in a way, 
right? Now, probably some people will disagree with me here, but in a way, I was lucky not knowing at the start, right? In a way, I was lucky. Not not all the time, but in some ways I was because it helped me deal and it helped me build up coping strategies, right? When no one was around. Because now I've got all them and I could actually pass it on to my son and hopefully he'll have coping strategies and, and be able to deal way, early than, way earlier than I ever was. So in a way it was good. In a way it was really helpful that I didn't know and that's just, <laughs> I keep saying this, but it was good that society punished you for going out of the normal because I always say that with people. I mean, I think society was a bit too stringent back in the 80s, but there's a good healthy balance between getting things right and getting things wrong. Whilst we should be okay allowing me to be myself, right, my weird, strange self, it's always good not to let me go too weird <laughs> if that makes sense too weird to think that it's okay and that it's acceptable to be that weird i think i think in the 80s and 90s we we sort of had a good balance and it was good that i, I didn't know because knowing me at the time i would have used it as a, an excuse and a shield to be an absolute dickhead <laughs> i really would have i would be like oh no don't blame me it's because i have autism you know <laughs> yeah so it was in a way it was i'm not saying everybody else but i'm saying in a way it was good for me that i didn't know because i would have used it as, as a shield at that point in my life now i don't now i'm like you know the way i'm acting is because of me but all in all i have a very positive attitude to life and i think that it, um it's almost a bit of a bonus being high functioning autistic because i'm very very loyal to my friends and my wife and my family, right? And because of that, because I've picked well, I, I would say my my friends that I've picked, the family that I've, I have and so on, it's been through good choices that I've made. And that is returned. That is returned, that loyalty, that, that fealty is returned. So, you know, as as... I live a very positive life. Um, I can't say that I'm mad at life or anything like that because I'm not. I always think autism's a positive, especially in work, because when you go into a specialism that you really like, you really focused, and it's hard to break that focus, and you get shit done, and you're quite competent at what you do, and it really gives you a bit of a leg up above other people who too busy talking too busy not getting on with their work and so on anyway i would just say there's lots of positives to having or how to be in high functioning autistic is not oh doom and gloom this bad thing you know it's it's actually i find it quite positive but then again i don't know how it's like to live as a neurotypical person so it might be just as good it probably is just as good I mean, you guys enjoy being social. <laughs> so anyway, thank you very much for listening. I hope that was informational about my high function in autism. My name is Raymond Baxter. Please give me a subscribe. Peace.